Time to record my favorite of the time series topics. Let's answer the question, what are arch and garch models? Up until the 1980s, the field of econometrics, basically that's just a fancy way of saying economic statistics, or was it statistical economics? I forget, whatever. Either way, this field focused heavily on modeling the mean of a series. You do this through modeling the actual values of a target variable, like modeling a specific stock's price, for example. From the mid-1980s until now, though, there has been an increased focus on modeling the volatility, the movements of a series. Basically, for example, the volatility of a stock price. You might think, wait a minute, I thought variance was a single number. Why would it change? Well, that kind of variance or volatility, the typical kind of variance you learn about in an introductory statistics class, is what we call unconditional variance. Basically, it is a single number that describes spread. However, we also have another kind of variance called conditional variance. This is the kind of variance that changes its value based on pieces of information or data. Typically, we say this kind of data exhibits heteroscedasticity, basically just a fancy word for variance that changes. Now, if you have any experience in data analysis or regression, you will have warnings going off in your head when you hear the word heteroscedasticity. We think of things differently in cross-sectional data and time series data, though. For a difference between those, click on the video in this series on the upper right-hand corner. In cross-sectional data, heteroscedasticity is a nuisance that we try to avoid or correct. In time series data, however, it is something we desire to model, especially in the worlds of finance and risk. Now, why are we modeling volatility? Well, here's a simple example. On the left, you see the raw values of Microsoft stock. Those are hard to model. On the right, you see returns or percentage changes in Microsoft stock. In that right-hand plot, we can see how the prices change over time. Periods with high changes in values are referred to periods of high volatility. Notice how these tend, not always, but tend to happen together. Periods with low changes in value are referred to as periods with low volatility. Again, notice how these periods tend to happen together. In fact, because the periods of high volatility and low volatility seem to not only change over time, but have a pattern, that means we can model it. If we can model when data, stock markets for example, have higher periods of volatility, then it can lead to better decision making. For stocks, it can help mitigate risk, price options, or even balance a portfolio of assets. Of course, since these volatilities are changing over time, we can use the idea of time series modeling to help with this. There are many different approaches to this, but we will take the ARIMA-like approach. Just like with ARIMA models, we started first with autoregressive models, which leads to the autoregressive conditional heteroscedasticity, or ARCH, model created by Robert Engel in 1982. It takes an autoregressive approach to modeling volatility. It predicts the volatility with an quote-unquote actual value of the volatility today. That actual value of volatility is the squared value of the returns. Now, you might have a lot of questions about that last statement. Let's quickly dig in. What do you mean the volatility of a single day? Well, imagine that there are many possible values that today could take. Those possible values have variance, but we only see the one that actually happened. OK, but how does squaring that value help with daily volatility? Well, look at the population variance equation at the bottom. The average value of the returns is typically estimated to be approximately zero. So that piece is gone. Now we only have one day. So when we now only sum over one observation and time point, that leaves us with just the squared returns of today. I know, I know, it seems like cheating with math, but these models work really well in practice. So let's just go with it. Of course, you can have many lags in your arch model. We label these models as having Q lags. The only downside is that estimating real-world data typically leads to large values of Q. This leads Tim Bolerslev in 1986 to create the generalized version of this model called the Garch model, kind of like extending the AR model to the ARIMA model in regular time series. This model has both the quote-unquote actual value of today as well as your forecasted value of today to estimate the volatility of tomorrow. You could have as many of these lags as you want in your data, but typically in real-world data, we only require one of each. That makes this much easier to estimate. 
Fun aside, Tim Bolerslev emailed me not long after I graduated with my PhD and asked me to review a paper for him about someone else's new extension to the Garge model. I went home to my wife and nerded out for at least an hour that Tim Bolerslev actually emailed me. Tim, if you ever hear this, you made my day that day. Thank you. Now, why was I nerding out so much? Well, let's just say Garge framework of models has exploded in number over the years. This is just a short list of some of the models that are there. And there is mine. That is why I nerded out that day, and that is why this is my favorite video to create. So what are Arch and Garge models? Those are Arch and Garge models in under five minutes.